Namaste and good morning to everyone. Today is International Women's Day, a global day celebrating social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women. The day marks a call to action for accelerating women's equality. This year, International Women's Day appeals the women to break the bias and celebrate gender equality. Resonating with the same theme, Frontless has organized today's Pragete Vichar, Break the Bias, to celebrate the strong women personalities in the publishing industry. Pragati Vichar Break the Bias is being hosted on Pragati virtual event platform, powered by publisher, the female publishing leaders group, and supported by the Federation of Indian Publishers and Indian Reprographic Rights Organization. This one day virtual event will bring interviews and close and personal insights with renowned women personalities who have created their unique identity in the male dominated publishing industry. I'm extremely privileged to welcome Budur Al Kazmi, the IPA president and founder of publisher in Pragati Vichar Break the Bias 2022. I welcome you Budur on the behalf of Frontless Media. Thank you and namaste everyone. It's so good to be here. Thank you again for this opportunity Pranav. Allow me to introduce Budur Al Kasmi to the entire audience of Frontlist. Budur Al Kasmi is the CEO and founder of Kalimat Group, a leading children publisher in the United Arab Emirates. For more than a decade, she has been a driving force behind the efforts to grow the Arab world's publishing industry, including Sharjah Publishing City, the world's first publishing industry free zone. She chairs the Sharjah World Book Capital 2019 committee and leads several global, global initiatives to promote freedom to publish, youth and gender empowerment, and cross-cultural exchange. Budur is currently serving as the IPA president and the second woman in its 125-year history and the first Arab woman to, to be in this role. She is the founder of Publisher. It is an empowered community seeking creative, viable solutions to many other gender-biased inequalities that have long characterized world publishing and other creative industries. Budur, thank you. And you have, a, I must say, a very impressive profile and have been working very hard on the global publishing initiative as we have been seeing. It's an extremely our pleasure to have you today for this event. Thank you so much. So we'll start with the Q&A round. And my first question to you would be, from MSc in medical anthropology to becoming a key woman in promoting the publishing industry in Sharjah, how has been your journey? Thank you, Prana, for that question. And um, my journey, just to cut it short and uh, uh, keep it interesting for the listeners and viewers today, I'll say that my journey has been uh, nothing short of incredible to be honest with you. I feel really blessed and grateful to be on this journey. Uh, it started by chance, actually, by accident. Although I don't really believe in accidents and I don't believe that coincidences exist, uh, this was my uh, experience in publishing. This accident has really developed into a career for me. And I'm grateful for all of these experiences, all the accomplishments, all of the knowledge, and all of the amazing people that I met along the way. I've learned throughout my journey the importance of cooperation and collaboration. Uh, I've learned how to work with colleagues from around the world. I've learned um, that reaching consensus on various issues is not always easy, uh, and that sometimes you have to face some challenges and you have to you get a big pushback from the status quo culture. Um, and, you know, I learned a lot on this journey. I learned that listening and empathy can bring people together around meaningful conversations. And working on a global level has been really an eye-opening experience for me. It influenced how I perceive publishing as a powerful component for human civilization. And it's also increased my passion uh, for our industry. I feel very motivated to continue working with my colleagues from around the world and how important it is for us to reaffirm the role of publishing in social, cultural and economic development worldwide. Now, let me go back to say uh, just what this accident was that brought me into publishing. 
I would say that my uh, oldest daughter, who is now in university, <laughs> um, complained to me that she didn't have interesting books in Arabic. And that really spurred on, you know, my journey and into publishing. I decided to set up my own publishing house just because of that one conversation that we had. So in a nutshell, I believe it was fate uh, and it was meant to be. And I really believe it's been the best experience of my life. Great. So as you say, learning is never ending. True. So 2022 is the last year of your IPA presidency. How do you want to make it memorable? So just like my first year, I believe that I'm going to put all of my focus to contribute as much as I can to IPA and to all of my publisher friends worldwide. Um, it's a critical time for our industry. As you know, publishers are facing so many challenges. Some of them are very specific to our industry and others are not. And we need to stick together and we need to continue coordinating to find solutions. Uh, some of these challenges have really given us an opportunity to look for new solutions, to look at digital transformation, to look at new business models. And I really wanna focus my energy during my last year as president of IPA on supporting publishers to navigate these challenges and to benefit from any opportunity that they see possible. As, you, as we always see, disruption brings a lot of opportunities for everyone. And I think so with uh, under your leadership at IEPA, there will be a lot of opportunities for the global and the local publishers across the globe. So my next question to you is, on this International Women's Day, how do you think the publishing industry will break the theme of 2022? That is break the bias and how you shall continue to do so? I think the first step, Pranav, is for us to recognize that progress has already been made in our industry in terms of getting more female publishers into leadership positions. When I started uh, in this industry almost 15 years ago, there were very few women in leadership positions, and I've seen a big, big change happen. And diversity and inclusion have also started to take center stage in many of our conversations. So I think the main challenge in my opinion, is that progress is not at a global level. We can see pockets of you know, progress here and there, but it's not really taking that global level uh, that we want. Um, some markets are way ahead and some are still beginning this journey. And that's where we really need to support our colleagues in making sure that they're able to keep up with all of these changes that are happening. From a personal level, I will continue leading these conversation, inviting more publishers to join. And at the end of the day, you know, what we do as publishers is we enable voices. So it only makes sense that we lead by example. We enable all the voices within the publishing industry to start talking to each other and making a difference. Great. So what inspired you to start a community known as Publisher led by women to bring gender equality to world publishing? Well, my journey as an Arab uh, female publisher had a big influence on me starting Publish Her. Many times, uh, Pranav, when I used to travel for business trips, especially to book fairs, I found that I was the only woman in the room. And I felt very lonely. I felt very out of place. I felt like there were no women around me and it was always dominated by men. And it never made sense to me. I always used to ask the question, why? And it was a conflicting situation for me to see. On the one hand, I see many women working in the publishing industry, but on the other hand, there were very few that reached the leadership position. And when I started working globally, I found that this is not a particular situation in the Arab world. It's also obvious in many other markets. And so with the support of like-minded publishing colleagues, I established Publish Her as an organic movement inside the industry to create real and lasting change to mindsets and the status quo culture. That's the interesting one. So. Mm -hmm. 
what type of issues you have been managed by publisher to improve the gender bias in the industry? So the most important step we took at the beginning of uh, Publish Her was to unify our message, which is really, really straightforward. It's that leadership positions should be determined by merit, not other measures. And to drive this message home and support it with concrete action, we started conducting interviews to highlight successful stories of female publishers and their organizations and how they contribute to the progress of our industry. So these success stories are important, first of all, in changing the mindset of people and also instilling confidence in the young generation of female publishers. And also we wanted to change the practices that reinforce the status quo. So we launched the diversity and inclusion toolkit, which helps publishing houses review their work and how they're hiring and HR practices to implement more of an inclusive approach. And by the way, this toolkit is available for free for anybody to download on the Publish Her website, which is www.womeninpublishing.org. Uh, and, and since we've launched this toolkit, many publishing houses approached us for guidance and they wanted to create the change and they said that this tool could really help them uh, do that. And last but not least, we launched a mentorship scheme and also a reverse mentoring program, which let female publishers and young talent to learn from each other through this program. Um, you know, we're just starting, but I'm really proud of what we've achieved so far. We've created a movement, we've created awareness, we've created a community, and I believe that we're able to see the positive impacts very soon. So what is the vision of publisher for the year 2020, now going into its fourth year? We will continue, uh, I believe, what we started three years ago. Uh, we've had to stop a lot of our events because of the pandemic, but we're hoping that things will pick up again. Uh, there's nothing uh, to replace you know, in-person events. We had very successful in-person events that really created a very positive and encouraging atmosphere for female publishers. And we've been trying to replicate that uh, virtually and online but hoping that we're able to go back to uh, physical events in the near future. Our vision has still been the same. It hasn't been changed. Our resolve and determination has grown. We want to focus now on growing the community, welcoming new stakeholders, creating new initiatives, and creating lasting change as well. So by bringing diversity and exclusivity to the international organizations like IPA, IFRO, and et cetera, do you think there is a possibility of change? Absolutely. I believe that change is ine inevitable because evolution, Pranav, it's a dynamic process and we can't shield ourselves from it forever. So my message is, instead of resisting evolution, let's go with it, let's flow, let's open our hearts and minds to new possibilities. And I believe in IPA specifically, uh, the, the uh, diversity and inclusion is on the agenda. It is in all our conversations, we're supporting all of our member associations to discuss diversity and inclusion. And it's creating a lot of positive changes throughout the uh, membership on a global level. So how is Sheikh Habudal planning to break the bias this year in the publishing industry? Uh, being the second uh, woman a president of IPA in 125 years is already a big step that we're breaking the bias. So I feel that that's a huge achievement as it is. I keep repeating that because honestly, it's taken 125 years of us looking for um, a, a female leader to lead IPA and that story needs to change and we really need to create uh, a positive image of IPA in supporting female publishers to leadership positions. We've already started that because my current vice president and the next IPA president is a woman, Karini Pansa from Brazil. And maybe the next woman after her, the next VP after her will be a woman, who knows? We're still looking. 
but we are shattering stereotypes. I think that's the first thing. And we're really breaking the glass ceiling. And I can see a huge shift in people's minds. I think more and more colleagues are accepting the idea that women can lead uh, organizations like IPA, uh, because it's really, you know, I believe that it's a mindset issue at the beginning. You know, the core of the issue has to start with mindset. Um, and I feel that there are still pockets of resistance around. But however, the more we talk about it, the more we have events like this, the more awareness, I think the more we're able to create consensus on this critical subject. The Indian publishing industry is very male dominated. What do you think they can do to develop more diversity? You know, Pranav, there's an Arabic expression that says nothing can scratch your skin like your nails. <laughs> and the meaning is that uh, to develop more diversity in the publishing in the Indian publishing industry, then we need men to create that change. We need the leaders to create that change. So to be champions and to make the sacrifices necessary to see the progress. And I'm really, really happy to see you personally do that, you know, and I think you've taken a huge initiative by creating a lot of awareness around International Women's Day by inviting me to speak and also by encouraging more women to be part of this movement and bringing this important topic uh, to light. So I believe you're already doing it. You're already creating change with these conversations. I also believe that creating the opportunity for debate is also important, asserting female voices, and progress is healthy for everyone. It won't happen unless the current narrative is called into question and revised. Diversity and inclusion have proven beyond doubt that it brings benefits across the spectrum. Embracing these ideals will support growth and the development of the publishing industry for sure. Thank you so much for answering, uh, answering all the questions so beautifully. Congratulations oh, for that. And uh, I must say that uh, under your leadership, I would say in the global publishing industry, we have seen a lot of positive changes. And I do hope so that it will continue the same way. And we do see that the voice of the women is well recognized, not only in the global publishing industry, but across the spectrum. Oh, thank you so much for your kind words. Thank you again for this interview. I look forward to seeing more interviews around women in publishing, and I wish you all the best with the rest of the events you have planned. So I, so this for our audience, so this was Sheikha Budur al Kazmi, the current president of the International Publishers Association, where she shared our th she, where she shared her thoughts and views on the International Women's Day, the challenges, the opportunities, the plan she have as IPA president to roll down during her current year. So it was pleasure having you Budur on this show. And uh, it was a great pleasure. And I wish you all the very best and many congratulations for the International Women's Day. So this was Sheikha Budur al Kazmi with Pranav Gupta, the founder and director of Frontless Media. Thank you Budur so much. Break the bias theme for the 2022. Thank you. Break the bias. <laughs>